Learning foreign languages is no longer just a hobby. We live in a globalized world and job opportunities for those knowing foreign languages has increased phenomenally. Interacting with foreign clients and broadening their business base to all countries has become a priority for all the companies. To explore the career possibilities we have with learning a foreign language, we are going to talk to a retired professor JVD Murthy, former head of Department of German, Osmania University. Hello, sir. We welcome you to the Department of Mass Communication and Journalism. Good morning. Vielen Dank. Good morning. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thanks. So why is learning German as a foreign language a better option than other foreign languages? One of the easiest questions to answer. <laughs> Germany is number one in Europe right now. And we have so many companies, uh, Germany-based, which have opened up branches here, which means more opportunities for students more opportunities for jobs, and which means, again, German is popular. So what are the various uh, courses available in Osman University for learning German? Uh, the university offers uh, basic language courses, starting with uh, the junior diploma, the senior diploma, and the advanced diploma. The junior and the senior diploma are both a semester each, whereas the advanced diploma is a one-year course. And this is roughly uh, equivalent to the European standards uh, A1, A2, A3, you know, B1, B2, and so on, where the junior diploma is about A2 level, which means about 1,500 uh, vocabulary. Uh, the senior would be roughly C B2 with C1, a little bit of C1. Uh, again, that's about 2,500 words. And uh, C1, about 3,000, which is desirable if you are looking for a job which entails speaking in German 24-7. And uh, the advanced diploma also teaches us literature, or the students who take up advanced diploma, they also learn a little bit of literature, both classical as well as contemporary. So they are familiar with the, the works, the, the period, and the culture. Fluency is naturally very good at the advanced diploma level. Fluency in language alone is not what is uh, just important. Along with that, one has to have some cultural fluency as well. And that is what they learn by the time they finish their advanced diploma. Which other institutes are offering this course, sir? And what is the eligibility criteria for that? Right now, we are here in Osmania University. Right next door is the English and Foreign Language University. Uh, here, the criteria is the plus two or any equivalent examination. Having passed that, they are eligible to apply for a course here. The other institutions have their own eligibility criteria. I think EFLU has a plus, uh, I think, 10. Then there's Ramkrishnamat, which also offers from plus 10. Uh, then there's the Goethe Centrum uh, in Banjara Hills. They offer courses throughout the day, but that's more of a private institution funded by the, the German embassy. And uh, the students that we have had are repeating courses at our institution because they want to improve on what they have learned earlier. More than that, I would not like to comment on the level of German. So does age matter when it comes to learning a language like German? And how difficult is it? The sooner the better. Unfortunately, the university doesn't allow babies inside the institution. I've also had students who were 75 plus when they came to learn the language. And uh, I could not, I cannot rather recall age as an impediment in their ha learning the language. Of course, they used to complain that they, their retention power of new vocabulary was not as good as of the younger ones. And as far as the difficulty level is concerned, well, German learning German is as difficult as uh, learning any other thing, a sport, for example. It's your own attitude and your aptitude towards the language or whatever you're taking up that makes or breaks you. Experiences while you were teaching the language, and do students generally fail to attain mastery in this, or where do they fail to attain mastery in the subject? Uh, let me start with the first part. I've had a number of interesting experiences, some of which I'd rather not relate on camera. But uh, one fascinating and interesting experience I used to have earlier when I first started teaching some 30 odd years back is when the girls and the boys, they still sit separately though. They refused to interact with each other when I would present them a text where they had to perform role play. 
that of a German man and a German woman talking to each other. The ladies or the girl students in the class refused to speak to the boys and vice versa. And there was a lot of giggling. So I had to get them to overcome that hesitancy of interacting with each other. And I told them learning a foreign language means that they have to interact. Otherwise, there's no point learning the language. And uh, it took a while, but I got around to that. And as far as the failure in mastering that, or the possible failure, is that we tend to think, or the students who learn German, they tend to think in another language. And that causes a lot of interference problems. And for us, the interference comes from their having little or no mastery over English, which they use in the classroom. And that causes lots of agony when it comes to the grammar part and also the vocabulary, because the words don't match. Neither does the structure. So does learning a foreign language like German provide ample career opportunities? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It goes without saying. Mm -hmm. Did you know that the BMW is designed in Hyderabad? The entire process of designing the car is done in Hyderabad. A little bit of confidentiality, so I can't name the company which does it. I've had students who are working there, and I've also taught at this particular company. They designed the entire BMW car here. Apart from that, you have uh, chemical industries, you have electronics, you have consumer goods, whole lot of industries which have opened up shop here and which are employing local uh, students with knowledge of German and the local culture and language which gives them, the company that is, a, a good base to expand more. And at the same time, their profits go up because labor is cheap compared to what they would have paid a, a person in Germany. And the students are happy with what they get. The minimum that my students earn when they join such a company is between 40 and 50,000 rupees a month. And I have one student who is now earning about a lakh a year uh, 12 lakhs, I mean a lakh a month. Yes, a lakh a month. And this is within five years of his having joined the company. I'm sure no other job would have given him that rapid rise or climbing up uh, possibilities. What branch of students benefit the most? Is it the arts, sciences, or the engineering students? That's difficult to put down. Because uh, I do know of science students who have totally forsaken science and taken up language seriously and are into the job. There are art students who learn the technicalities of what they are doing on the job just because of German. You know, basically, I put it this way. German is a kind of a side door entry into the company. I hate to use the word back door. So if they can't get in through the front door, they use this language as a means to get in through the side door. And once in, they make a name for themselves and a career. So what are the possible career paths for students? For instance, you can, for example, get into the teaching profession like I did, or freelance as a translator or as an interpreter. Uh, interpreting takes a lot more skill. You have to think simultaneously in two languages. Uh, I don't know how many of my students have really done that. The ones I've offered the job to, I think only two of them took this up because it's uh, your mind smokes by the end of the day. But it's very, very paying. Whereas translation, uh, is again a paying job as far as India is concerned. The rates are pretty good here, but cheaper than what uh, a translation would have costed or would cost in uh, Europe. Uh, German to English text is normally four rupees a word and in English to German, eight rupees a word. If the same thing were to be done in Germany in the rupee equivalent, it would be twice that amount that I've just quoted at the minimum. Normally, translation rates here are about a third of what they would cost abroad. So that's uh, the other option. Then uh, you have multinational companies where they work interacting with clients in uh, Germany or the German-speaking uh, world anywhere, not necessarily Germany alone. They have to solve problems, sort out problems that calls for a slightly better proficiency level or they sit and uh, you know, answer back standard questions with the little knowledge that they have, which they again improve on as they go along. Uh, apart from that, there are 
people who are offering consultancy services, which again calls for some level of German, which again having achieved that while working, they take up later and split up. Um, are career opportunities facilitated by the university? Well, the university does have a placement cell and I have interacted with the cell earlier, uh, giving them the names of the students and uh, they managed to place a few, but the really good ones, uh, they literally walk into a job, even before they finish their courses. I've started with about 160 to 180 students minimum in my classroom. And by the time the examination comes, I'm talking of the second level, that is a senior diploma. By the time the examination comes, or the examination time comes, most of them may have been absorbed by the company because their German has improved and they quit. So uh, the placement cell is trying to do their best, but the companies prefer to approach us directly. They come directly to the department, set up a small uh, examination center or room there and hire and issue the letters of appointment on the spot. So what are the prospects for individuals proficient in the language? Freelance trans uh, translation to start with. There is no shortage of uh, such jobs. They can take up any kind of translation work provided they're good at their subject. Uh, for people who are free and lots of time to spare, they can also, for example, offer consultancy services. There's also teaching which they can do. There are students of mine who have t uh, set up their own teaching centers and are doing very well in a way, giving back to society what they and themselves have learned here, which I appreciate, but um, I have reservations too about it. So Germany has emerged as a popular destination for those interested in doing their MS or PhD. So for such aspirants, is learning German a necessary? Uh, as a necessary option, you mean? Yeah. I can answer that question in German, which means Jein. Ja is yes in German, nein is no. So it's a combination of both, yes and no, jein. Uh, yes for the MS level, no for the PhD students. Uh, let me try to explain that very briefly to you. The a master student, uh, when in Germany, he or she normally joins up the university and is busy with the course at the university. Germany now offers these master's courses or master's programs in English, totally in English. So which means uh, that a student or a learner in the classroom or in the auditorium or in the hall has absolutely no problem following the lectures. The problem comes the moment he leaves the lecture hall or she leaves the lecture hall. Interaction with the university staff and the general public at large, who unfortunately do not speak very good English or in some cases no English at all. So knowledge of German there helps facilitate that person's lifestyle and improves the negotiation skills of that student there in that situation. So for a master's student, it's imperative. For a PhD student, not, well, the same criteria would apply there as well, I agree. But since the research degree offered is mostly in English and a research scholar spends most of the time reading and studying, the interaction with the local populace is not as much as that of a master student. It's mostly with the professor or the teachers or the academicians who speak a fair amount of English. But if you kind of bunch them together, like you did in your question, uh, then yes, knowledge of the language does help, but it's not a compulsion to gain admission. So if that's what you're looking for, then you have your answer. Thank you, sir.